Question number seven, Grant Robertson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Finance. Does he stand by all his answers to oral question number 12 yesterday? Well, uh, the Honourable Bill English. Uh, Mr. Speaker, yes, and I particularly stand by my statement where I said I stand by my statements. <laughs> Supplementary question, Mr. Supplementary Speaker. question, Grant Robertson. Has he received forecasts from Treasury that show a deficit for the 2015-16 year? Honourable Bill English. Uh, well, Mr. Speaker, as I've indicated a number of times, the uh, forecasts in the budget are likely to show a slight, compared to the half-year update, an increased, uh, slightly increased deficit for 14-15 and lower surpluses for 15-16. Uh, point of order, Mr. Speaker. Point of order, Grant Robertson. Speaker, I seek leave of the House to table a OIA, do OIA document released by the Treasury dated the 7th of November 2014 that forecasts a deficit for the 2015 year. Leave us sought to table that particular OIA. Is there any objection? There was another supplementary, table. Question, supplementary question, Grant Robertson. Is it correct that Treasury advised him that even if he made the cuts to the budget forward spending allowance that he did, that the surplus in 2015-16 would only happen if the fall in dairy prices significantly rebounded? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr. Speaker, the uh, Treasury may have given that advice at some stage. I don't. I don't recall it. What I can tell the member is that. The budget is a fairly dynamic process, and that is, uh, it's an interaction of government decision making and new information. And he'll just have to wait for uh, the budget uh, later in May to um, see exactly where uh, Treasury and the government ended up. Supplementary question. Supplementary question, Grant Robertson. In light of that answer, does the minister recall paragraph? E of the paper dated the 7th of November 2014 that says that budget surplus in 2015-16 could only happen assuming dairy prices rebound as currently forecast. Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, no, I don't recall that particular paragraph. Uh, and in any case, uh, that's, I wouldn't say the advice is wrong, I'd say it's partial. As we've discussed in the House before, there's a lot of factors. There's a lot of factors that lead to the operating balance of the government, the whole sweep of $73 billion of expenditure and what's happening with that. Uh, and as we've discussed a lot over the last couple of weeks, uh, other factors which weren't known in November, such as the inflation rate being a lot lower than expected and the impact of that on the total size of the economy. Supplementary question. Mr. Supplementary Speaker. question, Grant Robertson. Is he aware of the Goldman Sachs report from July last year that indicated that there was a five year global milk glut and that with a further fall in milk prices last night, there is now a $7 billion hole in the New Zealand economy? And did he take that into account when assessing if a surplus was possible in 2015 16, even with a reduction in spending? Honourable Bill English. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, there's been any number of reports about where dairy prices might or might not go, but I'm a bit surprised at the opposition attitude because they're usually advocating that we have too much dairy, and so presumably they're pleased when the prices are lower and the industry isn't doing so well. Supplementary question, Grant Robertson. Is it correct that not only has he failed to deliver his promised surplus for seven years, but he's actually on track to fail for an eighth year in 2015-16, unless there is a major rebound in global dairy prices, which no one is predicting? Honourable Bill English. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, no, but I can tell you that eight years of political failure by the Labor Party must be a lot more painful. Question. Question number eight, Kanwal Singh Bakshi.